Hi. 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 So I'm Deck Lane. This is Studio 120. Let's make. In the last video, uh, we did this. We did this. A freeform drawing of feathers and circles and squares and flowers. But I was thinking about this last night, thinking quite a bit. We've done, hi, we've done, tw I think, 20 different video or 20 different projects so far. Within each project, though, there's layers. There's many, many layers. And so you, I don't think what I've expressed well is you can take those projects apart and add them to other projects, and you've got something totally new, totally fresh. Just because we've made characters, let's say, flying a kite, doesn't mean they have to stay flying the kite. Or just because we've made characters that are marching in a parade, doesn't mean they have to stay that way. Or trees. You can use them in other projects. Kind of like we, what we've been doing is making our own artistic and visual Legos that we take apart and we can put back together again, if that makes any sense. In the last video, let me see what I have. In the last video, um, I was suggesting we take this freeform drawing and turn it into a gator. Oh God, very warm, excuse me. It's super warm here. So I was suggesting we, I was suggesting you could draw this with me, take a photograph of it, and then have it printed on, on a gator, which is a long, it's a long face covering. It, it goes from your nose down to your chest. This is a gator I had printed up with one of my paintings on it. And you see how long it is? And you see how far around it goes? This painting is actually five feet high by four feet wide. So it's extremely large, or sort of big. This is Yeyu Kusama, Japanese artist Yeyu Kusama. I fell in love with her face before I knew who she was. And I just, I was obsessed with her face. So I had to paint her. So she's four feet by five feet. She's sitting in my little storage room here in the house. Um, but I really wanted her printed on a gator. Uh, and we're getting them printed up for, uh, for resale now, too. I have a friend that's helping me with that, as well as many, many of my other paintings, many paintings. Um, but what I was suggesting, once again, is that we take this and we turn it into an image that you can have printed on your own gator. But as you can see, it's not going to be wide enough. Let's, let's make, let's unfold, sorry, let's fold this a little bit differently. There, she's, the painting, or the image, is about halfway through the, halfway, um, uh, split in half, rather. So we've got this image that if we took and we split in half, would only cover that much of the fabric. Now there's lots we can do if we're not, we don't have to be tech savvy, but you need to have the ability to photograph the image Photograph the image and then run it through a program like a Photoshop or like I have. I have Microsoft Paint, I think, and blow it up. Blow the, make it larger um, so that it would work on the gator. <clears throat> but let's say, let's say we were taking this and we wanted to add to it. We know that we have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of images that we've made. We've made a lot of images, and what I'm pulling out right now is just a tiny fraction, a teeny tiny fraction of the things that we've made. I have a massive pile of illustrations that we've made sitting in the storage room with my paintings. So we have a, actually a lot all ready to go that we can work with. So we don't have to, we could draw a border, we, you could, excuse me, photograph this run it through a program, blow it up. You could also color it, photograph it, run it through a program, and blow it up. Or, as is, or you could extend that border. This is another freeform drawing that we did. So you could actually take this or make another version of this or your own drawing and extend the border. Add it on before you photograph it. I'm very, like I said, I'm very old school, so I'm used to pasting and taping and all that.
but there's a million different ways you can make this work if you want to make this the primary image. And if you want to add on a border without having to draw a new one, which, which will be part two of this particular video set, um, if you don't want to do that, you can just find ways to manipulate it through a Photoshop-like program or have a friend to help you. Have a friend help you find a way to make this work. So we already, we could already have a border if we wanted. We could cut this up. Um, we could take it, run it through a program and copy and paste it around this image if you decide to use it. So that's one option. We will be drawing a border for this at some point in time, but we are going to need a way to make this longer and wider so it prints on the gator really well. It looks cohesive and not just like an image kind of planted there. But I want to show you something else too. Because of the many projects that we've made, <coughs> because we've worked in layers, we are able to take some of the pieces we've done, like this is from our map. This is from our map that we've been working on. And just kind of add that in. If you're really happy with an illustration that you've done, you can just take it off of the project we were using, throw it in the middle, or throw it up top. Just add it. You could take a character. We've drawn Jimmy several times. You could take Jimmy, excuse me, <coughs> and put him in and then run him through a program so that he, run him through a program so that he's large enough or this is large enough to then go to the printer and have it fit. But look it, we've got Jimmy. If you identify with J the Jimmy that you've drawn, if you identify best with the Jack that we have drawn. Again, these are all characters from a book I've been working on forever and ever. Look it, how well does he work? How well does Bugsy's house work? Look at how cute that is. So you can take apart the projects. We could put Joel flying a kite right in the middle of this. You can take Dixie's house. Watch this. Take Dixie's house. Look at how cute that is. I want to give you options. I want to give you options. There's a scooter that we worked on. How cute would that be? So I'm just trying to show you what you can do with what you have, which is always the point of Let's Make. Look at it. How freaking cute is Dixie on there? There's Bugsy. There's Bugsy. So those are all from another project. Those are all little things that you could use. Let me see if I have anything else. Oh, I've got Joel's house that we drew for the map project. Look at how well Joel's house fits in there. So take a look at what you've made, what you've created. See if you can get them to work together to build um, an elongated version of the gator. See if you can, you know, make it wider, longer, before you have to run it through, you know, a manipulation program like a Photoshop or a paint. Okay, this is a terrible segue because I'm not good at it, but um, sometimes, sometimes I'm really good at it, but today, not so much. I wanted to touch on one other point today. Oh, and something about bandanas was going to be thrown in there too. But I wanted to touch on other, one other point today. Um, I was talking with a friend last night who said, basically said that I've managed to keep the drawing simple enough and the instruction easy enough and calm enough where, where she felt she could draw. Um, but I, I think about all the people I've talked to in my life who find out I'm a painter and they say, I can't draw a straight line. Well, dude, neither can I. As we've seen, my lines come out all wonky and weird. But I think about all those people who, think, who have said to me, 
I can't draw, I can't draw, I can't paint. And I used to think that way because I've had people tell me I can't. Um, my seventh grade, my sixth or seventh grade art teacher told me I'd never be an artist. And that broke my heart for a long time. And it always stuck with me. Who was he to tell me he could, I couldn't do something? It was none of his business. That was just his monsters coming out for a visit. I never should have listened to him, but nobody told me, nobody explained to me that maybe he's coming from a point of having a broken heart, having somebody tell him he can't do it. So what I'm trying to say to you is, if you're watching these videos, you can do this. It's basic shapes, basic lines. That's all it is. You don't have to draw a straight line. You can draw squiggly lines like we do all the time. Squiggly lines. I have a couple of rules in painting. Actually, I have three, but I can never remember the third one. <coughs> but the first one is, it doesn't matter. Art is an experiment. Every time you pick up a, a pen or a pencil, or sorry, better order, pen or pencil, or paintbrush and paint, it's an experiment. It's not written in concrete, so it, it, it's not permanent. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. We're taking our basic shapes and our basic lines and our squiggly lines and we're seeing how far we can take ourselves. So first rule is, it doesn't matter because we're always going to be progressing. Rule number two, it's, always, it's all fixable. Whether it's paint or it's pencil or it's pen, it is all Fixable. That's what erasers and rags were made for. So please keep that in mind if you decide to pick up a pen and follow along. It doesn't matter. It's all fixable. And then rule number three, I can never remember to save my life. I want you to, there's a quote, I think it's Eleanor Roosevelt, walk confidently in all directions. Walk confidently in all directions. Just pick up that pencil. Not like it's the enemy, but like it's an extension of you. Don't worry about the lines. It doesn't matter. It's all fixable. It's all fixable. Now that art teacher who told me I'd never be an artist. He's gone, by the way. I think he had several heart attacks. But uh, he was one of the angriest, angriest people I've ever met. Angry to the core. Hated everyone. Not in a fun way. Like, hated people. And when I saw his artwork after he passed away, I realized he wasn't very good. So his opinion of me, of my artwork, or what I do, never should have mattered to me. He never pushed himself. He never got better. He never let go of what he thought he knew. He never experimented. He just did what he knew. And he got angry and frustrated and like I said, he was not very good. I would never tell him that because that would be hurtful. Well, I can't now because he's dead. But when people, have, when people say to you, you can't do something, don't listen. Don't listen. They're coming from their own monsters, okay? I want you to keep that in mind. All of that in mind when we're sitting here drawing. If I had listened to him... I never would have been able to paint a four-foot by five-foot painting of Yeyu Kusama 
that actually people really love and share online. And it's been seen around, literally around the world. If I had listened to him, I never would have left my hometown. I never would have had solo shows in New York. I never would have done this. I never would have had the courage. So tune that out. One thing I do when, when I'm drawing, well, when I'm painting, so that I don't think, I don't hear his words, and I don't think you can't do this, is I distract my mind. This is like, okay, this is the last part of this chat. I distract my mind with a podcast, with an audio book, but I make sure I remove all my monsters from my head. I keep them distracted so that I can allow myself to just work, to pick up the pencil, pick up the pen, pick up the paintbrush, and just let the paint talk to me. Let the image that I'm producing talk to me. Let the reference guide me. So that's what I'm suggesting to you. If you are getting frustrated, first of all, get up, shake it off, jump up and down, shake your arms, shake your head, shake all that doubt and anger and fear out of your body. A couple of nice big deep breaths. Sit down, turn on the video again. Please listen to my nasal, I know it's nasal, but hopefully calming tones, and just draw. Let it go. Okay? All right, I'll see you again soon. Ooh, I want to talk about uh, watercolors, which I'm terrible at. But I want to... <laughs> no, I really am. But I want to talk about watercolors, and we're going to experiment a little bit with them in the next video, okay? All right, all my best. Oh, I forgot to mention, this mug I show in a lot of... I have in a lot of videos. It's always got tea in it. This is one of my favorite objects ever. I have a couple of mugs, but this one is by an artist named D. G. House. The letter D as in dear, G as in generous, house as in the thing we live in. And you can find her on Facebook. She's awesome. She's a really nice person and a great painter. All right, I'm going to let you go now. Ciao. Ciao. See you soon.